must have room for another wolf. All right. Hey, everyone. Sketch here. Welcome to our latest community live stream. As you just saw, we are super stoked and excited to be here. Just a few days away from the start of Lone Wolf Season 2 on Halo Infinite. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about that and what you can look forward to. But first, let me introduce my co-host. Please welcome Community Manager John Unishek. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Good to be back. It's good to be back. Kind of coming back in normal. I've got my official live stream jacket on. I've, yep. got, I've got what to do. So we're... we're <laughs> The, what do they say? Nature is healing, right? Yeah. New hat, too. Um, yeah, yeah new, hat. yeah, new hat. By the way, a quick shout out to our friends, of course, on, on the uh, gear team here, Halo Gear. If you go to gear.xbox.com, there's a Tenrai collection available right now, actually. So this is uh, yep. one of the new pieces of uh, gear that they bestowed upon me to represent here on the stream. Yeah, we just wrapped up the, the final run of Tenrai. We actually, did. Yeah. And, and, and a long run it was here. And really just acknowledge... Uh, you know, it's been a it's been a tumultuous few months. We'll just we'll just call it what it is. Uh, really, really excited about the launch, but you know, at this point, it feels like that was a lifetime ago. So uh, life life moves sort of fast and slow at the same time. But mm -hmm. just wanted to acknowledge that we understand it's been a, a stressful time for the community. It's been a stressful time for us here at the studio. Um, and I also want to say thanks to folks who have been really just patient, supportive. Uh, we always appreciate the feedback. We've got no shortage of feedback, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. But yep. people have been asking us. They hope we're OK. We hope the team's doing all right. Um, we're doing OK. We're yeah. hanging in there. Yeah. Uh, we got work to do, and we'll talk about that here on the show today. And, and we got a lot to get after. But um, you know, just wanted to acknowledge, we understand there's been some frustrations, and we would all like to have more things happening at a faster pace. And we are going to get there, but it's just going to take us a little bit of time. Yeah. I always want more Halo, you know. Of course, who doesn't? <laughs> uh, good news is we're only a few days away from at least a, another nice dose of some really fun, cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Speaking of feedback, though, John, um, you know, a few weeks back, you spent a lot of time put together what we've called season one kind of outcomes blogs, right? Yeah, um, yep. two of them, yeah. And quickly, want to we're not going to go through all those in detail today, <laughs> but just kind of give us the cliff notes for folks who may have missed out on that. Yeah, we wouldn't want to do the full thing. I think it came out to like 36 pages uh, on, on the Word docs. Uh, but yeah, some of the stuff we covered uh, was focused on live, focused on multiplayer and game modes and stuff like that. But overall, right now, uh, outcomes, lots of improvements for season one or season two coming up. One we actually have uh, that we could roll a tape on. Oh yeah, this yeah, act, that, I mean, we actually just found out about. Yeah, quick backstory here is we were just looking at this build, uh, which by the way, huge shout out to our team and the test team in particular. We've got our final candidate, our release build is ready to go for May 3rd, but looking at this video here yesterday yeah. in, the, in the studio, um, one of the changes that we've heard a lot of feedback on since launch was players wanted a little more agency over the player outlines, right? Yep. And uh, so w in our outcomes blog, we mentioned, yes, we'll have a slider in season two. Uh, but what we didn't mention was that the slider goes all the way down to zero. So you can turn off outlines if you want on opponents, and you can kind of get that more classic Halo look and feel if you want. Your teammates will still have their gamer tags displayed over their head like you can see in this bot match. But anyone who does not have that is an enemy, so you want to shoot at them. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's I want to note this is just an iterative step, right? It's just yeah. about usability, but it's just one example of you know, the types of feedback that we've heard and some steps the team is starting to take now to address that feedback. If you go mm -hmm. to HaloWaypoint.com, you can yep. check out, uh, like John said, about 35 pages of editorial. But basically, each team that works on Halo Infinite goes through all the key feedback that we've passed along to them from the players and they provide responses and generally let you know what you can expect and what they're going to go after and, and what they're going to do in the future. So yeah. really good read there. Yeah. When we get that feedback from Reddit, Twitter, Waypoint, YouTube videos, surveys that we send out to Halo Insiders, right? So we're getting it from everyone. Uh, so it's a really balanced approach and all the teams know what is the community all up talking about? And, and we address that directly in those blogs. And I'll just add one more note, um, something that uh, you may recall Joseph mentioned in his blog last month. We are also working on one more public facing resource um, that we hope to stand up in the near future that will essentially be a, a Trello board of sorts. If you were around during the MCC work, you're familiar with what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. but. We want to do a better job being a little more transparent and providing kind of a self-service resource. So ideally, at any given moment, a player could go to this page 
and clearly see quickly uh, what are we working on and what the status of, of each of these key mm -hmm. pieces of feedback are. So um, we are committed to getting that out as well. And again, I just wanted to stress that we've, we've heard all the feedback. It's, it's all been taken to heart. And um, some, of the some of these things we're already going to see coming on May 3rd. Other yep. things are obviously going to be a little bit grander in scope and are going to take a little more time. But um, I do want to just say thanks again to everyone who has stuck by us and taken the time to give constructive uh, feedback and, and input. And um, the game will be better for it. So thank you. Absolutely. Now, John, let's yeah. uh, let's talk about, oh, sorry, before we get into season two, just so folks are aware, we're going to talk quickly about season two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be joined by Joseph uh, Staten here, our head of creative. We're going to sit down. Talk a little bit more about what we're doing this year, what you can look forward to uh, in the year ahead. Reflect on the roadmap that we shared last week. Also going to talk a little bit more about uh, the new narrative aspects to our seasonal model and what you'll find when Lone Wolves launches next week. Um, and then we, you and Jerry caught up uh, the other day, right? Yes. Yeah. So we ta talked on Monday and we've got a recording of that for everyone, which you can see right there. Yeah. Uh, season two battle pass our, for Jerry our... Hook. And uh, then we're going to wrap it up, you and me again, talking yep. a little bit about Kansas City and all the other things going on in the, the Halo franchise. Yeah, it's our, it's our, our basically since Rally, it's our first big major, um, and that get, kicks off in just a few days. So we're excited about that. So before we uh, welcome Joseph and John, um, I thought it might be helpful. Just Let's just do a quick recap. You know, season two, Lone Wolves coming next week. May 3rd is the, is the, is the start date. Yep. I believe we're looking at 11 a.m., uh, Pacific time, global release. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that a bit more at the end of the show. We actually, I think, have a, a handy rollout map so you can see exactly what time season two will be live in your neck of the woods, right? Mm -hmm. um, give us a quick rundown, John. A couple quick highlights. Season two, Ooh, Okay. put you on the spot. What's the pitch? What do we got coming? Uh, two new maps. One arena, one big team. Both look amazing. Uh, three new modes. Last Spartan standing. We'll kick off an event, actually. Uh, with launch on May 3rd. We've also got Land Grab, which will come in a later event, Entrenched, which is a lot of fun. And then we also have uh, King of the Hill, The King Returns, a fan favorite, classic one, one I've been looking forward to and I, I missed tremendously. Uh, so yeah, two maps, three modes, lots of events, narrative events, I'm trying to think. Well, we else? have a full-on battle pass. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say you I, forgot the, the the thing I cover later yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, here's a. I love this shot. You know, we had a similar image created for the launch of the game, but this is just a look at some of the new uh, customization content and what you'll be able to do for your own personal Spartan over the course of season two. And like John mentioned, in just a little bit, uh, we've got. I think basically you and Jerry are walking through 100 tiers of our new battle pass. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, also has direct and immediate improvements based on player feedback, which y'all will mm -hmm. be speaking to a little bit more later, right? Yes. Yeah, we cover that as well. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get back into the Season 2 content here in a minute. But first, uh, we're going to take a very fast break. I'm going to welcome Joseph Staten, and we're going to talk to you a little bit more about what the studio is currently working on and what you can expect later this year. We'll be right back.
All right, and we're back. Um, quick shout out, I forgot to mention before we, we, we cut away. Um, that was, of course, a closer look at one of our new maps coming on May 3rd. That is Catalyst. Um, we're very excited. That's our arena map, as you can see, really kind of steeped in that classic Forerunner architecture. Uh, some really fun gameplay is going to transpire on that. Also, a shout out to Josh and the Transmedia team for whipping up that really cool um, sort of evocative fly through. I love the ambient sound effects as well. But now it's time to cut over. Josh, let's pull back and introduce our guest, Joseph Staten, head of creative. Welcome, Joseph. We're back. Thank you, Brian. It's good to be back. And I have to say, I'm so glad that you're wearing the the costume that you've worn consistently. I really like the Tenrai hat. I think it really sets it off. But, you know, there's some other Tenrai, I don't know, just like stuff that you might. That's a nice flex. Yeah, I don't it's know. a nice flex. It's good to always show up with some new swag. We are the we are officially <laughs> the Fracture Bros, right? So it's, <laughs> right. yeah, Team Fracture, here we are. But I already said yeah. this earlier, but well, let me tell you how this went down, because I walked into the office this morning, and they just, like, put the sweatshirt over my little body and pushed me into the room, so... You're a, um, you're a walking billboard. That's, that's, that's how right. it works. No, but it is, it is very comfy and, and looks great. I highly recommend it. Yeah, and you can pick it up yourself at gear.xbox.com. That's right. All right. <laughs> so, Joseph, uh, thank you for joining me. I feel like, yep. what was that, Last late last year we did, our, we did the live stream over in the Hub, right? We talked yep, a little bit about... Right. Little different circumstances, if I recall, that was the... Uh, the, the conversation about how Forge and Co-op are not going to be ready for launch. So um, yep. at some point we'll have to come through and we have no sort of caveats whatsoever. And we'll just <laughs> play that. We'll do a play date. We'll have you come on for a season two play date. Sounds good. But I thought, you know, why don't we kick things off? Because mm -hmm. it has been a bit. Um, also want to acknowledge that you've written two blogs as well since then for us. You had an April update. Yep. Um, which we just put out with the roadmap. We're going to get to that in a second. And, of course, in the March update as well. But mm -hmm. same thing you did in March. I'm just going to start off by asking you, season two, it's yep. locked and loaded. We got our final release candidate back. We're in great shape for May 3rd. What's the team working on right now? Well, first of all, I just want to say uh, a big thank you to the team. Super proud of all the work that led up to season two. It's been a real push since launch to get that ready. You're right. We have our release candidate. We're on track to launch. So just a big thank you to everybody who's been working so hard to get that out the door. I'm super excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so in addition to shipping season two, what we're really working on is looking beyond that. Forge, co-op, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. We'll talk about quality of life. Really, what we're doing is a lot of planning from now until the end of the year and and beyond. And in fact, I spent all morning in a planning meeting. As soon as I pull off my Tenrai sweatshirt and exit this room, I'm going to go back into planning meetings for the rest of the day. You know, the team is really working to lay down track, get good plans in place. And we'll talk a little bit more about the details of what that means, you know, I know later on. But that's really what we're doing. We're launching season two and we're heads down working on what comes next. Yeah, and I think something else I would, by the way, I forgot to mention, you can keep that sweatshirt, by the way. You, you don't, you, you, yeah, you can take it home with you. It's a, it's a parting <laughs> gift. So. You know, it's actually like a size large. So if I, it's like there's a medium, but if I were to stand up, it's like down to my mid thigh. So I'm like, hey, everybody. Walking around in my adult size well, sweatshirt and my child size body. It's interesting. I mean, I've sized up a little bit in the pandemic, so I don't, know. <laughs> I don't want to speak for you. But, yeah. uh, you know, one thing that I, I like the way you laid out in the blog might be good for people that missed it is um, you had you had clearly articulated what our current priorities are right now as yep. a team. And you mentioned shipping season two, which we can basically check that box off. Mm -hmm. So um, can you remind us kind of what, what are our high level priorities right now? Yeah, so shipping season two, and then it's going after things that are keeping the player experience from being great in our game right now. This really gets to quality of life, which I think we'll get into some details about specifically. So hitting those issues that when you play the game, um, impact your experience in a negative way. We want to make sure that we're prioritizing that work before we go after you know more content. Now, We'll talk more later about we're still going after more content, but as we work inside the studio to prioritize what people are working on the right things, that's our North Star. That's our number one. Like That is what we need to be focused on right now. So, um, And then, yeah, at the same time, we're focusing on running a healthy studio. You know, We're not in it to run a sprint. We're here to run a, a marathon, and we want to make sure that our team, who's doing such awesome work, um, has the time to do that in a healthy you know, way with a process that supports them with the resources that they need. So that is our fundamental priority that we always keep in mind, even as we're pushing to improve the, the state of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, maybe it'd be helpful right now, um, real quick. We have the roadmap um, graphic. So if we want to yep. just pop that up, um, give folks a chance in case they missed it to 
to take this in, and we'll break this down here in a little bit. Um, we're not going to go through all these points because, you know, we're going to talk more about what's coming next week with season two. But, um, you know, I think clearly the thing that we know jumped out the most to our community, uh, which was expected, is the dates for season two in particular. Um, and in this case, I think it's safe to say it probably was a surprise to most people that season two will will, will last longer than they expected. Yeah. Um, Joseph, can you just talk a little bit about like why are we making this deliberate decision to essentially extend season two? You know, I, I also want to just acknowledge last year, well before launch, we had we had talked about yes, you know, at face value, our our goal and our vision was yep. a season would last approximately ever every three months or so. That's, That's right. Generally, the norm, you know, in the industry. Um, we then realized that season, you know, launching the game was going to be challenging in its own right, and yep. we would need some extra time before season two was ready. Yep. Also, to your point about team health and that we don't want to, yep. you know, really hurt the team in a negative manner. Mm -hmm. um, so I think some people were not expecting uh, that we would also need to extend season two itself before we get into the next season. So just yep. a little bit of context from you, I sure. think, would be helpful there. Well, one thing to make really clear, none of us inside of 343 look at this roadmap and are happy with it. You know, all of us want to be doing things faster to deliver more content. You know, we still have this desire to get into a rhythm, a healthy rhythm, where we can ship a season every three months. So for us internally, it was painful, frankly, to communicate this roadmap with a season that was going to run for another six months. But the reason why we're doing that is exactly what we talked about before. We have to prioritize going after quality of life issues that are impacting the game right now. Like today when you fire up the game, that's our number one priority. We're still working on additional seasonal content, but we need to create space for the team to rigorously go after these improvements that matter right now. You know, you and Uni just talked about the outlines, for example. It's one example of many, 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 many things that doesn't matter three months from now. Yep. It's, a, it's a right now kind of thing. And so that's really how we're organizing ourselves to go after that, that work and why we're extending the season now. But to, again, to underline this, none of us looks at that and says, great, six months seasons are awesome. They're not, they're really, they're not. And we need to get ourselves in a position where we can deliver uh, more frequently. And we're working on that too. Absolutely. And you know, I also just want to note that we discuss this a lot. You and I have talked about this, like just, we knew this is going to be, to your point, not the roadmap we would like to put out if, yep. we, if we could yep. really do what we wanted to do. But it's also important that we still maintain some open, transparent discussion. And even if there yeah. are discussions, right? right? So um, last thing we wanted to do was just sort of pull the rug out and surprise season two is now live and it's now a shock to everyone. So yeah. fully acknowledge it's not what people want to hear, but we're still committed to being open and honest about what's going on. Um, and we want to get to the point, obviously, uh, you mentioned where we can really start to do a better job meeting player expectations. And we will get there. Yep. Um, let's talk a little about the quality of life stuff that you mentioned. Maybe first of all, it'd be helpful context. Mm -hmm. like, how do we decide where, like, where those pieces are? Like, how do we come up yeah. with that stack ranking list? Who decides and where do these inputs come from to say, yep. these are the things we must go after? Yeah. So. There are a variety of inputs that we get. You know, one is just the team playing the game. You know, the truth is in the software. You sit down and you play, and there's the truth of the experience. So we play the game in our internal play tests. We also get insights through um, things like our competitive insights team, our, our pro players. We have user research that we use. We have telemetry that just comes out of the game that we take a look at. Um, we, we do a lot of things to get data. We aggregate this data, and we put it on something that internally we call the, the hot list. Um, and we track it, we prioritize it, and that's how we go after you know one body of work versus versus another. So part of quality of life is the internal quality of life that we need as a studio. We need robust systems in place to gather these insights, get them together in a list, and go after them. And that's some of the work, but not all the work, of course, that we've been doing since launch, yep. is making sure that we've got a good, rigorous process to be super planful about what we what we attack. Um, we've had to go slower to get that process in place. But the whole point of going slower is so you can accelerate later. Go fast, go slow to get fast. And so I really feel like on the insights part of things, we're really getting up to speed in a great way. We well understand the work ahead of us. That's why, you know, Uni had those awesome insights blogs, those outcome blogs. So we have a really good sense of the body of work. We just need to get our heads down and, and go after it, which, which we are. Yep. 
And I just want to reiterate, too, we obviously have a really diverse 20-plus year franchise, global fan base, mm -hmm. and it's important that we also acknowledge that different types of players and different people have different things that are more important and matter more to them, right? Absolutely, so, yeah. You know, part of the studio's job is to, how do we pull back from that and prioritize the most impactful changes that would ideally impact the broadest subset of players, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, which means some of the more fringe things that we know are still important mm. may then have to take a lower priority, right? Yeah, but it doesn't, right. doesn't mean we don't care. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole point of a prioritized list is to put everything on there that you could do right and then pick the things that matter that matter yep. most but you're right that doesn't mean that we don't care about certain things yep. that's not true yeah. um maybe let's talk about just a so we have these quality of life uh we have all this information i safe to say i think we have yep. plenty of feedback no question about what we know we need to go do right yeah um what are a couple examples uh off the top of your head of things that the team is actively sort of investigating and or working on right now. Yeah, well, it's very kind of you to say off the top of my head, but because my head and my brain are getting older <laughs> these days, your notes. Yes. I actually brought yes. some notes to make sure that I was it's very smart. specific yep. about these. And you told me it was like a newsroom sitch, yeah. so I could just show up with my papers. Sure, All right. we're, we're loose here, it's fine. <clears throat> All right, good. So, um, yeah, half kidding, and this is on the top of my head. But yeah, when we talk about quality of life, stuff that we're going after that matters right now in the game, we think about things like anti-cheat. You know, and that is not a thing that we're going to solve tomorrow or in two months or three months. This is an ongoing effort, quality of life that's going to continue. But we know there's some things that we need to dig into now, today, specifically on anti-cheat. Um, the ranked experience is something that we also have recognized as something that matters right now. Um, and this includes like fundamental um, behind the scenes stuff that we need to do for ranked so that we can go after some of the ranked playlist issues that players feel right now in the game. Um, so that's work that we're diving yep. into. Um, network improvements around desync, um, as well as just the way the players report bugs. We just wanna make sure that we've got a good handle on that. And then of course, we're also going after big ticket, longer time frame items, um, things like match XP, Spartan career. Yep. Now we can't today say definitively, well, th this is where these things are gonna land, but it's important to just acknowledge Look, we under we know these things. We're going after them. They might not show up on the roadmap right now, but that's because we want the roadmap to be a credible, reliable source of source of truth. And so, uh, there is work going on behind the scenes on these quality of life as well as many many other things um, that we could talk yep. about, in including some of those internal studio just are the way we work, the way we organize ourselves. That's our internal quality of life that we're focused on too. Yeah, and in our next segment, um, I believe Jerry and Unishek will talk a little bit more about, mm. specifically on the live side of the game, some things that they're focused on. Uh, for example, how do we how do we diminish the core restrictions we have in place? Like we've heard loud and right. clear, our players would like to be able to mix and match more content across more Spartan cores and have more yep. customization agency, right? So um, that's another example. Mm -hmm. um, heck, I would even note, even the season two battle pass today is a reflection of player feedback and changes that were made. Yep. Things like adding in credits, um, increasing yep. the value, the free track has a lot more content and Jerry and John will talk a little bit more about that yep. uh, when we're done here. Yep. Um, so you also mentioned in your blog, uh, the way that we would deliver these quality of life updates would be via drop pods. Uh, wh what does that mean? Drop pods. Well, so we wanted to pick a name that had resonance in the Halo universe. And if you think about an ODST drop pod, right? They're racked up in the belly of some UNSC ship. They're always ready to go. They're just, they're racked and they're, and they're waiting to drop. And that's how we approach the delivery. We want to approach the delivery of this content. Um, we don't want to just wait and hold things back for season releases. If something's ready, we want to be able to put it in a pod and drop it. We want drop pods leaving the frigate or whatever it is. Uh, 343 on a regular basis. Our goal is to get into a monthly cadence of a drop pod a month. We're not there yet, but that's the goal. That's part of why we're taking time in season two to go after this work. But just think about a drop pod as a delivery vehicle, content, features, bug fixes, lots of different things could go into a drop pod. We want to be able to do them every month. If something's ready, it goes that month. Um, we don't want to hold and wait until season boundaries. So again, this is the kind of stuff that doesn't show up in granular detail on the roadmap, but when you see the drop pod icon, when we say drop pods, just know that it's our way, ideally on a monthly basis, and we'll get up to speed to deliver content when it's ready. Um, yep. Content, features, bug fixes, um, it's just a vehicle to deliver that stuff to you. Yeah, and I also safe to say, 
as we hit these different kind of checkpoints along the way, I mean, you know, the drop pod is staged, we're loading it. That's right. Once we know what's approved and cleared to drop, we will then be able to update our community and say, great news, here's what you can exactly. expect for this month's drop pod. But it is a bit of a, it's in flux, right? There's things that are constantly shifting around. So it, it is, to your earlier point, we want to be credible and mm -hmm. accurate. So it's not possible today to say, here's yeah. what's in drop pod one, here's what's in drop pod two. But but that will be yeah. evolving and we will be remain yeah. committed to make sure we communicate that yeah. to our players. Just to give a little bit more context here, because I think um, if I were a community person hearing what you just said, I might go, well, wait, it's like, you don't, you don't know what's going to go in the first drop pod. The reality is, we're talking about planning meetings that I just came out of, that's been the work of the team for some time now. Yep. It's figuring out, let's look at drop pod number one. Let's look at what we would want to put in there, referencing the hot list and the priority of improving the player experience now. Let's look at our capacity planning, how we want to attack this. That's all work that's, that's been going yes. on. And so internally, we actually have good plans together. It's that are we ready to communicate it externally yet Correct. in detail? And we're not there yet because we don't want to we don't want to put out a plan that isn't rock solid. Yep. And so that's that's the tension. I know you and I talk about this and internal to the studio. Trust me, there's a tremendously strong desire for us to be able to say even more. But we just want to find that balance between not over committing and then having to retract. It's, yeah, that's that makes, not a good feeling. Yeah, it's not. So, so that's where we are right now. I don't want people to think like, oh, or, you know, that work is. That's a good point. Underway. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And even then, yeah. even if we already have a good sense of what's in the drop pod, until that build is cut and has gone through a full test pass that's and right. become right. a validated release candidate, it could change, right. right? So that's there right. is a, you know, you know how games are made, obviously. Yeah. Most people probably have a sense, but not always in exact science. There's always yeah. things that you have to kind of adjust for. Right. Um, I did want to also just add one more thing, Joseph. When we talk about these drop pods, I want to, I think it's safe to say, and we should just be upfront about this. This is not a world where we're just going to have a flurry of three or four drop pods and then cool. We've addressed all the feedback. <laughs> right. We're back in business again. Like, right. I mean, to be clear, this is a long, this is an ongoing oh. commitment. Yeah, and that's part of running a, a, a live game, right? Um, the drop pods that we release in season two will be more focused on you know, getting out those quality of life fixes, um, but that continues. I mean, for us, we are gonna be delivering drop pods for the duration of what we're doing. Like it's just, a, these are, like I said, monthly things. We wanna be doing regular updates. It's part of the way that we're gonna, we're gonna roll moving forward. So yes, I think you'll see a drop pod icon on the roadmap for season three, right? It just, it is, it is a continuous thing that we'll be doing. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. And the last point, maybe uh, before we, we switch gears here, you and I had also been chatting. While it's true that we are going after priority right now for quality of life improvements, um, you also noted this already. We, we just fully acknowledge we also have some content challenges. We, That's right. So safe to say in parallel, we are also still working on ways to bring more content to bear faster. 100%, I mean, like I said at the beginning, we look at this roadmap, we look at what we're able to deliver right now, and we know very clearly inside the studio, we need to do more. You know, it's, it's painful for us, it's painful to, to all of you that we can't deliver more content right now. Um, but we are, when I think about my afternoon meetings, I'm actively looking at ways to accelerate um, delivery of, of content as well as as well as quality of life. Excellent. Yeah. And again, we will provide ongoing updates as long as we need to and keep the community abreast of these developments yep. as we get real details. Yeah. Now, speaking of content, let's just change gears here entirely. We do have new content coming out in just a few days when Lone Wolves kicks off um, on May 3rd. So, you know, with your narrative background and, uh, well, sorry, I'm actually getting ahead of myself. First thing I want to talk about really quick, because it's been a little bit, yeah. you mentioned this earlier, campaign co-op and mission replay. Those are features that we are actively working on. We have kind of put a, a, a stake in the ground on the roadmap. We are targeting late August to deliver those to the game. Um, from your perspective, how are those features currently tracking? What's going on over there in, in the campaign world? Yeah, well, the smile you see on my face is because I had the opportunity to sit down and play campaign uh, network co-op with uh, uh, the folks leading that effort on our team. This was maybe a couple weeks ago. I haven't. I need to play a more uh, recent build. But it, everyone knows that Halo is more fun when you play with your friends. Like just that it's always been it's always been true and campaign co-op is no exception and it was just this magical moment where i've been playing it along the way but just to see a build that's progressed so far since last year a build that's getting really close to being done and released um 
it was just this magical flow of being in this big new Zeta Halo environment with three other Spartans running around as a foursome, just playing four player network co-op, um, exploring this wide open world. I just, it brought all of those feelings uh, uh, that I so much enjoy about campaign co-op, just rushing back again. So super excited, awesome progress has been made by the team on the, the campaign co-op front as well as mission replay and being able to just go back in and play things with less friction. It's, it's just super, super fun. So very excited about the progress that the team has been making on that. Big thanks to everybody who's been working so hard on it. Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be really really fun, and it's so nice to see it getting close to the to the finish line sure. too. Yeah. And as far as I know, currently we still have a goal of being able to flight that via the Halo Insider flighting program mm -hmm. at some point prior to release. So, in many ways, it's it's even closer than it would appear on the roadmap. So as soon as we have more flight details, yep. we'll be looking forward to sharing those. And of course. If you're not already opted in, you can go to HaloInsider.com right now and create a free profile. And if you want to maybe be a part of a flight for co-op or something else, that's the yep. first step to take. Yep. Um, next up, we have Forge. Yep. We haven't talked about that quite a bit since pre-launch. We also put that on the roadmap. We've indicated that we're targeting September. Um, one big change, though, is that mm. we are calling that an open beta now, which was right. a little bit different. Um, so might be helpful just from your perspective. What does that mean to you, uh, open beta? I have seen some people speculating and some concerns that, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like one tenth of Forge and it's right. just going to be this small little experience. But what do we want players to know about that? So when we say beta, it is the full feature set for launch for, for Forge. Like this is not a stripped down version. This is not, uh, you know, some features turned off, some features not. We've been flighting Forge for quite some time. Um, and so what people will experience in this open beta is the Forge tool set. Um, you know, some things are going to come later, like additional pallets and those kinds of things. But Forge is Forge has, is going to be its own, you know, uh, service as well. Like we're going to add things over time to Forge too. But you're right. People should not look at the beta label and think, oh, is this some sort of, um, you know, handcuffed version of Forge? No, not at all. Like when people, when people get it, they'll be, they'll be playing it with a full robust feature set for, for V1. Yeah, and I think, you know, originally we had talked about we were going to flight Forge at a larger scale before release, but mm -hmm. um, given that you have, you noted that we have been flighting it to a private audience for, I think, honestly, maybe two years or more at this stage. Yeah, it's been a long um, time, yeah. I think it's the right decision, essentially, by moving into an open beta. We can get that core tool set right into the game as soon as possible, and it lets everyone in the community with no barriers or restrictions start making real content and real experiences that will then persist. So... It's one of our ways that we can also yeah. help address the feedback that people want more content, more experiences. We get to recruit the community to help us in some regards. That's right. And I mean, all that fun innovation and new ideas that's always come from Forge, like we want to get that flywheel going as quickly as possible. And the open beta allows us to do that too. So you're absolutely right. When people jump in with an open beta, they'll be able to make stuff and it'll, and it'll, it'll persist as well. So people shouldn't think like, oh, is the work I'm going to gonna do go away? No, no, not at all. And we'll, of course, have a lot more to say and show and share about Forge uh, in, in the coming months. So stay tuned for that. I'll just say there's been some stuff maybe leaked out there. And there's what? A, lot, leaks? Lot, a lot to be excited about. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, Forge, Forge right. is going to be pretty awesome yeah. for this new generation. All right. Um, last thing I want to chat with you about, Joseph, we'll just change gears here again. Uh, Lone Wolves is, of course, the name of our of our season here. Um, we had Heroes of Reach for season one. Uh -huh. You have a lot of backstory and a background of yourself as being a narrative kind of guy. Yeah. So I thought it'd just be interesting, you know, from your perspective, what do we mean when we talk about sort of a seasonal narrative and storytelling during the season and, and even Lone Wolves? Like, just kind of break that down for us a little bit. Yep. So, uh, Josh, we wouldn't mind putting up the Lone Wolves uh, piece of concept art that we've got. So I think people are getting sick of looking at my face at this point. So we released this concept art a little while back. What does it represent? Well, when we say lone wolves, what we're really saying is our seasonal theme. And themes are compelling ideas that inform how we approach a lot of different content creation. Characters like this, uh, Spartan Eklund on the left, Spartan Din on the right. A theme for lone wolves what does that idea really, really mean? Well, who are lone wolves? Lone wolves are scavengers. They're Spartans who are operating deep behind enemy lines, far away from lines of supply. They need to be improvisers. You can see on their armor that if something breaks down, they find something on the battlefield, they, they use it for their own purposes. So these lone wolves are scrappy scavengers. Um, and when it comes to, well, what does that mean for the story? 
themes, really, they inspire interesting what-if questions. So what if we had two Spartans operating out in the field, deep behind enemy lines, and they found something very, very dangerous? And what if they brought that really dangerous thing back to the academy, brought, brought it back to this place of safety? Like, what is you as a player? How would you deal with that problem? And Brian, I don't want to spoil anything here. We can probably take away that, take away that image because the more, I, the more I look at it, the more I want to say. But that's, that's the idea. Um, you got scavengers. They're out in the wild. They find something interesting and dangerous. What happens when they bring it back? And maybe we can show a little tease of that uh, in a cinematic here. Um, this isn't the whole season two intro cinematic because that would be terrible. We'd, we'd spoil everything. But it's a little snippet of the opening cinematic for season two Lone Wolves uh, that we should take a look. Yeah, let's check it out. <laughs> They aren't hostiles. They're wolves. Back from the hunt. This Neuralink is corrupted, ma'am. I'll have to pull the chip and- No! Do that, he dies. And we lose everything he risked his life for. Ah? Uh, what does it mean? Ah, uh, you'll find out May 3rd. So, uh, something that went by pretty quickly in this snippet of the intro cinematic is when we plan our seasonal stories, we want to make sure that the player, all of you are at the heart of this story, driving events. If we kick off a crisis like this, we want the players to be the solution to that crisis. So this cinematic would immediately roll into the first event of the season. No spoilers, where you as a player uh, begin to work through this problem, and by playing, progress, progress the story. And that, in short, is seasonal narrative. But if we want to bring up the image uh, of, the, of the Spartans, so you can see in this image, you have a Spartan Din in the middle there on his knees. You have Spartan Eklund on the right. Brian, who's that Spartan on the left? That, well, that's the player. That's you. That's you in the game. Um, and so however you show up with your customization, that'll be, that'll be you. If you're, if you're rocking... My full neon Spartan and, and all my, and my katanas and, or my samurai, it's all going to be there, right? 100%. My mohawk? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of the things from the very early days of Halo that I am still super passionate about is this idea in Halo 1 that it was BYOG, bring your own gun to the cinematics. Whatever gun you had in your hand in a Halo 1 cinematic would show up. That's true for Infinite. Well, in this case, I guess it's bring your own armor, bring your own customization. So uh, in these real-time cinematics, in the in-engine cinematics, yeah, if you want to rock... I don't know, Brian. Whatever crazy stuff with your mohawk. Oh, we'll do it. Yeah, that's it'll it'll be there. And so, just another small way, but an important way that we're really emphasizing: Hey, this is you. This is you at the heart of our story, right there, boots on the ground, center of the event, center of the crisis. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I know we can't go into it today, but I just I want to acknowledge you all are kind of crazy because I know you've I've already seen it and I've heard you working. This doesn't just start and stop with Lone Wolf. So you've got n nuggets and threads right now that will actually span multiple seasons. Um, and this, this narrative will continue to grow with the player being really at the, at the center of it throughout. That's right. Um, you know, we still have a lot of work to do to figure out just planning and how we, how we get that going. But this is, um, yeah, what we, this is a serial story. It starts, well, it started with Heroes of Reach, introduced Commander Agrinia, who's also in season, season two, introduces our two Lone Wolves maybe some other things as well. And that story will continue from season to season and into experiences that we have planned um, beyond. So uh, yeah, if you want to get in on the ground floor, uh, see what the evolving story of Halo Infinite is, uh, May 3rd is your time. Awesome.
Joseph, I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you've got a lot of planning meetings to get back to that are happening right now, as you mentioned earlier, but really appreciate your uh, stopping by today. Thanks for repping the uh, the Tenrai yeah. um, Fracture Bros as well. Any final parting words uh, before we let you go? You know, I say this a lot in the blog posts that I put out and in online, and when I say that I'm genuinely thankful for everyone out there in our community who's passionate, even when you're noisy sometimes and light up my, light up my Twitter, um, we can't do our job without the feedback. Um, for those of you who are being like, especially supportive and patient, uh, even more gratitude. So thank you. Please keep the feedback coming. Um, you know, like I said, we're heads down. We're going after this work, and we got a lot of good stuff planned. So thank you. Awesome. Now, next up, we, uh, we as we mentioned at the outset of the show, uh, Unishek caught up with Jerry Hook earlier this week. They're going to walk you through the entire Season 2 Battle Pass and show you what you can look forward to for all the new customization content. But first, here's a quick look uh, again at our new big team battle map coming next week called Breaker. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, it's Unishek here, and today I am joined by Jerry Hook. We decided to match outfits so we could talk about Season 2 and some of the learnings from Season 1. Uh, Jerry, how are you doing? Doing great. It's good to be back at Block. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it feels good. Uh, I'm glad we were on the same, wa same wavelength coming in today. Um, but let's talk about Season 1, some yeah. of the learnings we've had, and then we can dive into Season 2, take a look at the Season 2 Battle Pass. 
one of the first things and most common things we got feedback around were challenges uh, throughout season one and kind of the ultimate weekly rewards there. Uh, what were some of the learnings we've had uh, right off the bat from challenges? Yeah, so uh, one of the things we knew coming into actually uh, right before ship is we knew we'd struggle in this area uh, just from what we had and uh, what I hope um, the community saw is us trying to respond really quickly to any problematic challenges that were um, what I'd consider esoteric or um, impossible to uh, land uh, without way too much work. We really, it really failed to meet our expectations of a system where we just wanted you to play the game. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to help make sure that one, we're being really responsive, uh, hopefully in a fast enough rate. Um, but also as we look forward to future, how do we want to make challenges? How do we start pairing those challenges stronger to the playlist you're playing instead of locking you, uh, locking you down right from the beginning? That won't affect you here in season two, uh, but we have, we've called a lot of the, uh, the challenges that were problematic for everyone. And like uh, the Killjoy challenge. Like, yeah, yeah, Killjoy or, you know, not as many Ravager challenges, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and really try to focus on just the heart of just playing, playing in specific modes and being successful there. Mm -hmm. And for once you've kind of finished those challenges, we've got ultimate rewards every week yeah. that pop up that players can earn. Uh, we're, we got a lot of feedback around season ones. Yeah, uh, we had yeah. some repeating emblems, uh, but season two, we kind of were turning the corner. Yeah. So one of the things we we um, we've met, Neil, as we've balanced a lot of what we've been trying to do with the game moving forward, is just go to the heart of is the design principles that we went against are they are they hitting our goals and can we put pressure on our our content to be able to get the right content for players that they actually value and so we've moved it uh, away from a lot of the consumable pieces we've moved away from a lot of the emblems um, and other things that they're valuable but when you're talking about a weekly challenge they don't really hit the high value that players are looking for where players are looking for new coatings or new uh geo those sorts of things new visors mm -hmm. those pieces and that's what we want to try to do moving forward and again you saw us make some of these quality life improvements um towards the tail end of season season one and we're just going to continue that moving into season two and so your capstones will hopefully be something that you want to chase um, and you feel good going after from a week by week basis. Yeah, I think in our outcomes blog, we said uh, coatings, yep. visors, and uh, we, uh, stances, yeah. right? Yeah. A as well as a little geo. Yeah, you, you mentioned might get some geo. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and then up next, uh, the shop. There was yeah. uh, a lot of conversations around the shop when we launched, and we did make uh, some strides to improve that, uh, and we'll have even more in season two. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest the biggest thing for the shop, obviously, is so uh, pretty early on within a couple of weeks um, after launching, uh, uh, we really uh, sat down with our business teams and we said, hey, look, uh, we have to go back to the drawing board. We have to go back to the drawing board on our pricing and our fundamental store structure. And again, that's just we didn't we didn't meet expectations. Uh, we knew we'd hit we'd have some challenges going into launch but didn't have time to fix them all and so we just went back pretty much to the drawing board and said okay look let's take a fundamental look let's take a look at the product lines that, that we're, we're trying to help make sure that that players feel are valuable and let's start breaking it up we lowered prices pretty much across the board in, in most cases um, and then we're also starting to look at like, let's do some individual sales. We will be looking at the future of continuing to make improvements so that if you open up a bundle and you just want, want one item, we are looking at that um, to help solve for that challenge. And then the other, the other things we wanna help make sure is, is that um, again, from a value perspective, the, the probably one of the biggest learnings that we got across the board is, is that um, you know, our avid players who have been with us for the last 20 years, they really wanted to see something new. And so when we look at, you know, where your feedback is on value, where, where your feedbacks are on, uh, you know, where that value sits for you, it's not in the 
old geo or it's not in the old looks it's actually in, in things that really spark you as as being new uh to play with which makes complete sense and we're trying to put our focus there instead of and you'll see that in a lot of the battle pass um instead of uh rehashing say spartan 5 stuff and and whatnot it's not saying that we're not focused on that at all because i know there's fan favorites but we want to balance from a purchasing perspective we want that more to be on the earned side than on the uh, purchase side gotcha and then uh, last but not least before we dive into the battle pass i know we had a lot of feedback around cores right yeah. customization uh cores and kits right kind of being yep. locked down uh but we're going to start changing that starting within season two yep. want to talk a little about a little bit about that yeah so i mean this has been a very hot topic since we launched and uh you know the initial goal uh, and you can see this in how we package together the battle pass uh for season one is it's really based around noble six and those those characters and when you break down those characters we really wanted to help make sure that those looks and those uh that fantasy was preserved and we really lost uh, uh, incorrectly the strength that Reach and uh, Halo 3 brought to the franchise of allowing players to really mix and match everything. And uh, we, again, we knew we'd have some struggles there. We didn't realize it would be as bad as it was. So um, if you didn't catch our blog last time, we are looking to move away completely from the core system. Um, and what that means for season two is you'll start seeing uh, specifically what I would call in canon cores. So, you know, your Spartan 5 to 7 to, you know, whatever we're doing for Infinite on a canon perspective, uh, we're trying to make that ubiquitous. So if you earn a coding, it's usable across all of those cores. Or if you earn a shoulder piece, it's usable across all those core cores. And our focus for season two, not from day one, but as we move through season two, is that your visors, your helmets, your coatings, those will be the first things that we go after. And then we'll slowly try to move everything uh, to be more ubiquitous. It gets a little harder when you take a look at, say, the Yori armor or some of the fracture cores, um, because they do have just fundamentally different structures um, that not everything fits in. Uh, and uh, so right now we're really taking a look at the cannon cores and leaving the fracture cores um, to their own right now. Um, but again, send us your feedback, let us hear that, um, and that'll help us, you know, basically where, where are we going to put the team to go and focus and go and correct? Yeah, the feedback definitely helps us prioritize yeah. what's most important to the players. Yeah, and kids. Kids are the kind of fit in that same challenge where the original design philosophy was a kit was more like a uniform. We wanted players to just pres quickly, basically, uh, put that uniform on, whether it be esports or whether it be a character, and just say, hey, look, that kit goes there. Um, and we want to make, from a design philosophy perspective, we want our content to be able to be used across all of our, uh, uh, basically, our players' characters to be able to go and make their Spartans look the way they want, including kits. Uh, those won't be on day one, but it is something that we're hoping to address in a drop pod um, coming in season two. And now for the grand finale we can talk yeah. about the uh, battle pass here for season sure. two uh we can talk about a little of the learnings from season one as we go through yeah. it though uh one of the coolest things you'll see in the game right off the bat you want to speak to it yeah sure so the first thing um as everybody knows our battle passes don't um expire which means you have to have a way uh, to equip the passes that you want to go and earn your content in. And so this will be the first time that you see this from season one. Um, and, uh, you know, here this has been completed, so you can't equip something that you've already completed because there's nothing to earn left. But had you had other things to earn there, you would have been able to equip it very similar to how you're equipping uh, any piece of armor. Um, and so you equip it and that's where your XP will end up going. Um, so whether you're earning XP per match or whether you're earning it um, through uh, challenge systems, uh, it'll go into the battle pass that you have equipped. Yeah, players from MCC should be pretty familiar with that, selecting the, the battle pass that they kind of want to make progress on. Yeah, typically. Uh, so here we've got uh, the season two battle pass, first yeah. look at it. Uh, what are some of the things that initially jump out to you here? Yeah, so one of the things I, I just on to just take a look at these first six levels is it really shows some of our structural differences that we're trying to make uh, for the battle pass all up. Um, you only see one consumable. 
Uh, you see credits starting to be earned. And when we, when we took a look at, you know, again, talking with our business team to say, hey, look, some of the, the original reasons for us not to have credits in the battle pass system were because if you had a battle pass that wasn't, wasn't going to expire, we wanted to, we wanted to make sure that we weren't l losing too much. Um, and so we challenged those systems and we're saying, hey, look, we think there is more value for the players, both from an engagement perspective, as well as every player knowing that if they've purchased a pass, they can earn that pass back, we think is a pretty powerful thing. We know it's industry standard, um, but we broke the industry uh, standard with not expiring the battle pass. But that really helps us, I think, get back to what will provide that value back to players. But also the other big thing you see here is um is your first free armor core within that that uh uh first six levels this is pretty critical for us because one of the things we felt uh looking at season one in season one you didn't earn a core um if you were a free player mm -hmm. um and for us when we take a look at valuing the player's time and and where we've kind of failed in a couple of ways um this is one of the pretty critical pieces and we wanted to make sure that um, as we honor uh, everyone's time, part of that is as you play, you're you're actually earning meaningful content, even if you're a free player, um, and earning you know a full suit is is the first step of that. This also actually permeates the rest of the battle pass. If you're a free player, you're pretty much I think we're about sixty percent. Don't quote me on that. If you're gonna you know land blast me with tweets or whatnot, you're fifty nine percent or whatever. I'm just saying around there. Our main goal was to try to help lift both the free side uh, of the pass, mm -hmm. as well as the pass in general on higher uh, valued content. Yeah, so see uh, the free track should have around 60% more yep. just goodness earned, right? More durable cosmetic unlocks and stuff right. like that. Uh, and we already touched on it, but the pay track also has this, Yep, absolutely. Uh, a total of 1000 credits yeah. over the course of the, the battle pass, yeah. Uh, but. Yeah. yeah, and then the great thing you're, you'll start seeing here is as uh, Uni starts scrolling uh, through this content is you're going to start seeing uh, content here that matches our narrative theme. And and as Joseph talked about, you know, Eklund and Din, uh, they're the main characters for this pass. Um, and they're lone wolves. They're wolves. They're Spartans who've been out on the hunt. Uh, they've been separated from the UNSC over a long period of time, so they've kind of had to scrap and pull together their armor. And you see that theme pretty much throughout the battle pass. And mm -hmm. it's one of the critical things we're trying to do overall for uh, creatively as we move forward, that being tied to the story, the ongoing story, as well as the look and the feel is felt um, throughout uh, the experience. And like I said, you'll 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 start seeing more coatings, uh, again, more unique gear, which mm -hmm. hopefully for every player who is looking uh, at playing Halo and uh, joining us for a new season, there's a lot of content there for them to go after that they haven't seen before, um, even if they've been a part of the con uh, franchise for 20 years. Yeah, so lots of good stuff, especially yeah. for that Lone Wolves Rakshasa armor core. Right? Exactly. And this is a free helmet that you can get right off the bat, you yep. know, just right at tier 11. Yeah. And you'll see there's less, there are still swaps and XP mm -hmm. boosts in there. Mm -hmm. They are still valuable for players, um, but you were seeing them less than you, you were in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and even events, events completely have removed um, our consumables across the board. And our events are focused as a primary means in which uh you are just you, you are earning through your time and your investment in the franchise mm -hmm. um a way to earn new content that we haven't seen before and uh as part of the battle pass you also see uh some mark 7 content right so players who've <laughs> been joining us since launch who had that mark 7 armor for yeah. free are going to get new new pieces of armor here in the, in the battle pass as well also yeah. some on the free track yep. and this is something that Everybody has access to the Mark Seven Core because it comes with the free-to-play multiplayer. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that we want to continue to build on again, just to help make sure that story of the of the Spartans um, continues to grow. Of what what the UNSC Mark Seven look like. <clears throat> yeah, nice AI color, high charity because yeah, it's right. got that Covenant purple. I like it. Oh, that's a good one. Get some of that camo, you know. Yep. One of my favorite uh, weapon charms now, the combat evolved one. 
toss the plasma grenade, launch the weapon to you, pick it up, <coughs> go on a tear. Uh, this and the uh, there's the extermination uh, weapon charm that'll be available with uh, Twitch drops this weekend at Kansas City. So I'm looking forward to having both of those to rock too. Yeah, and this this chess piece pretty early on is just a cr just a critical way in which you can see the that you know thrown together hey look we had to strap things together with wires and mm -hmm. and straps to you know help get this piece of gear be protective um and help that spartan uh still main, do his duty and uh be successful for the unsc mm -hmm. and now we're starting to piece together one Eklund. of our lone wolves yeah Eklund yeah. here so you start seeing her frame and yeah, you start seeing wasps. I don't actually remember if we had any wasp coatings in the season one uh, battle pass. But... I can't remember for battle pass specifically, but there were a few ways to earn and uh, also buy buy some coatings for the wasp. Like I know I've got one uh, that I rocked that I got in campaign. Uh, but yeah, and you see, you got you go next for the coating. You I get see. a nice free coating here. Um, you know, and, the, mm. and the, mm. the great thing we're trying to do here, again, you're seeing some different color variations and, and just some more customization for the player look and feel. Um, would you go to... Uh, Jump on ahead to yeah. Eklund's, Eklund's piece, yeah. a nice little stance uh, we can use to show off. Yeah, and nice. I just want to remind everybody, like, I know we're using a Spartan here. Th this Spartan that you're seeing here, uh, when we look at poses and whatnot, this is all things that are acquired in the battle pass so there's nothing yeah. from the store here so everything you see on that spartan is from the battle pass being put together it's a nice dealio right there yep Let's see uh boom there's eckland yeah and so this is her kit this is what she looks like in the cinematics um and you're seeing a lot of the the obviously the way we put kits together and one of the great things, again, from a character perspective, this just allows you, if you want to look like Eklund, this is what she looks like, and this is um, how how her Spartan comes together as a character. Real nice. Some more Mark Seven gear, right? Lots of good stuff. Oh, oh my gosh. I'll dare you to pronounce this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some additional shoulder pieces for Mark Seven as well. Uh, Rampart kind of looks like the EOD, you know, yep. of old, a classic. Keep jumping forward here. Some new gloves and some uh, chest attachments here. Like we were yeah, saying, I just always, lots of good Mark 7 stuff. These ones are always stuff. really good. Mm -hmm. uh, this one on the free track, a lot of players will recognize from our uh, key art on season one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can uh, now get it for free just in that, that free track in that chest attachment nice little helmet attachment there bright red on butler i can dig yep. it yeah but lots of good stuff right and uh one thing about the uh the battle pass that we have talked about um or haven't talked about yet is overall progression system stuff uh i know we wanted to kind of talk about that kind of with the challenges, but I, yep. I skipped over it a bit. We do want to make a long-term progression system, uh, but that's not in scope here for season two, right? Yeah, so what we're trying to do is, um, you know, we're trying to get the foundation ready for it with, uh, you know, earned XP uh, per match. Mm -hmm. um, but really that Spartan uh, rank or the Spartan career that we're all looking for uh, that's something we're putting long-term investment in. Um, you know, part of our drop pod system is to try to bring things online faster uh, mm -hmm. in in pieces, if possible. And this is definitely a top ask for for us to uh, with the team to get the Spartan progression system all up, so that people feel like they have a career outside of uh, the seasonal battle pass. Mm -hmm. And we've also got. Uh some nice chest attachments right here uh coming up another pretty darn sweet looking mark seven one yeah the pack rat i always love the grenade canisters yeah yeah anytime you got those kind of reminds me of a meal yeah exactly and then up next we've got uh let's see what we got here nice little vice security flag Access attempt locked. Are you seeing this? Success. This 
can't be right. No way. I won't compromise. This doesn't make sense. Breach detected. Do we know what's vulnerable? Oh, God. Core files target. We've got an intact matrix core. Signature is General Hunter. Answer me. Where did the core Data go? Data transfer in progress. I think we're about to find out. They're here. Transfer complete. Lux Balella. Artificial minds. Real solution. Yeah. Here. This one is one of my favorites, right? Yeah. With that black and red. And this is why I mean I really dislike the or you have unique color sets uh that are high contrast. Um these are the ones that I've always just enjoyed. You know, like the single armor reds and the things mm -hmm. that are really uh you know non non balanced is really mm -hmm. cool for me. Yeah, I'm really digging that look there. Uh continued Mark Seven, right? Lots of good stuff yeah. over there. Got some Rakshasa knee pads. Yeah, and this is the, you know, again, you're seeing tape, uh, electrical tape here, and just pulling the pieces together. And uh, it's just, again, a really unique re unique look compared to what, you know, it seems like it's fresh off the factory floor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and w one thing I've uh, kind of noticed here as we've been going through the battle passes, once you get to the second half, yeah, like things start getting real crazy. nice. Yeah. yeah. And you see that with this, uh, the cool shot shoulder piece right here. Yeah. Um, got it on both sides. And you got a nice, sweet looking armor coating here. But yeah, like you get this and you really start to see the tubes, the, yeah. <laughs> the patchwork, right? Oh, snap, I'm on the battlefield. Let me, let me get yeah. something together uh, and scrounge it. Oh. Yeah, this looks like a whole filtration system to replace the armor. No, Let's go light. to the. Ooh, the GRD. Yeah. GRD in the... So this is a fan favorite from Reach uh, that was th cut from Reach, then brought into Reach via MCC not too long ago, and now it's making its appearance here in Infinite, which is awesome to have, right? If the GRD never dies, right? <laughs> Some brass knuckle type That's things. That's right. That's fantastic. <laughs> There's very few gloves that I get really excited about, but I, those gloves are amazing. I love uh, the health pack. This yep. is so good. People, will, some OG fans will really appreciate this. You got the med kit on mm -hmm. both the gun attachment as well as a utility kind of hip yeah. attachment. So good. Big fan of that. Uh, GRD attachment. Some more coatings, right? This one's nice, like purple with a yeah. slight like touch of gold to it. Yeah. Really liking that. Uh, ooh, this one. Yeah, the Packmaster's glare. Yeah. So we learned a lot from from the cyber showdown of you know what we could do with effects and um, I think again the art team this mm -hmm. is a huge I think a really good attachment for players. Yeah, and uh, one thing that I I've really come to appreciate is we've also been learning our own tools on how to make things even better and cooler. Yep. Right, uh, it's a newer engine, right? So we're getting familiar with it too, making even newer, cooler stuff. Uh, and kind of pushing its limits even more with future customization content, which has been really sweet to think about, right? Like when we launch Forge and people get their hands on, they make kind of more simple things, right? Same kind of basic concept applies to us with our own tools getting better and better, yeah. making cooler and cooler things. Nice little helmet attachment here. Yeah, I just love the, again, throwing together tape and A little walkie talkie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get more into Jen stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Nice blades on the hip there. No. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. We're starting to get into Din's stuff. You're right. Looks on the free so track. Yep. We got a nice. He's clearly a hunter. Yeah. <clears throat> Visor there. Shoulder pads. Attachment for Din. Yep. Yeah, this second half is getting getting there. Oh, some so of my good. favorite Stuff shoulder pieces. Really spicy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one is kind of a elite shoulder piece that you have taken as your own. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Just be like, uh, I need that more than you do now. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna take it and use it. This um, is where you can really start saying, you know, just mixing and matching with. What the universe and the armor pieces of the, of the universe all up, not just Spartan. Another stance with that Spartan that we stood up there. Nice little darker 
black clean coating there's and then thing. here's a full look at din yeah this, like, this is what you you'll see in the the cinematic and him full characters joseph was talking about um earlier just really really unique really strong uh character look profile uh yep digging in yep this, i think Ooh. this i don't know if we had a full uh to go to the next one yeah. Ooh, there we go yeah we had mythic effect set yeah, yeah. Mythic set. You, i think you can see bits and pieces of this in our moj trailer actually that just mm -hmm. came out a couple of spartans are rocking this you can see a little bit of the green trail around them yeah uh, but some really cool effects. And then, it's a part of course, of the uh, they want mm -hmm. everyone's going to want these elite skull shoulder pieces are just phenomenal. Yeah, they are looking good. They get just pulled together like it looks like, you know, Din put this on himself and helped made it fit his whole armor set. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Nice little wrist attachment there too. Yep. He can crest shield node, but yeah. Yeah. The Skull Bearer Trophy, clean and overall battle pass, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. Yeah, with, just, with the learnings. Just from remind everybody, yeah. you know, every event we have, you'll be earning uh, content as well. And the the seasonal kickoff uh, with uh, and it, the first event right on May third. Yeah. Inception. What's the interference? Uh, interference. Yes. The other I work. Uh, so <laughs> interference and uh, the great thing about that is, um, you know, it's another first right off the bat, 10 items for you to go and earn and uh, you won't have any consumables there. It's all it's all gear. It's all customization stuff for the for the player. And then you'll yeah. have the new fracture coming out uh, within that first month. And I uh, can't wait for everyone to see. To dress up as their version of the almost World War II looking Spartan. It's very yeah. amazing. I love it. Yeah, the eagle strike there. Yeah, the eagle strike. Yeah. yeah. But we've said uh, interference launching on uh, May, May, 3rd. May 3rd right there. Day and date. It's going to have the last Spartan standing mm -hmm. game mode on Breaker, which is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and then after the event ends, we're going to have that uh, live in our larger playlist offering uh, with last Spartan standing on all the big team maps, yeah, right? So a, we won't the, just limit it to Breaker. Yeah, that's point. the other big thing that, you know, we're trying to be consistent on is now every time we launch an event, you'll see it move into uh, the general uh, playlist so you can continue to play it um, as a game mode. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that's kind of the big stuff for us here today. Yeah. I know we've got a little more for me and uh, Brian to sure. jump to. Uh, but Jerry, any last uh, closing words? No, I just want to say, hey, thanks, thanks for uh, coming with us on the journey. Um, and uh, hopefully you're seeing us make pretty steady progress to improve uh, and better meet the expectations of the community. One of the main things I have always said is community really is the end game for, for any strong uh, entertainment property, and uh, for Halo, that is for sure the case. Um, and I know that it's always hard to not get everything you want on day one, um, but we hope we're earning our way to continually make improvements that you're looking for uh, to be successful uh, for all of us in this hobby that we all love called Halo. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. It's a pleasure having you on. Hey. <laughs> we're back. We're back. Hey. Hey, wait, wait, what? No. What I uh, want to give a big thanks again to Jerry Hook for stopping by earlier this week, and uh, that was an exhaustive run-through of the Season 2 Battle Pass. Yeah, me and Jerry, uh, in case you didn't know, that was a recording from earlier this week. Jerry and I went over all 100 tiers of that Battle Pass <laughs> and had a lot of fun doing it. Um, one thing we did want to just quickly uh, clarify, we got some additional details after we recorded that segment, and we just wanted to make sure there was no confusion in that regard. Uh, we talked about, you know, we've always said once you buy the Battle Pass in Halo Infinite, it never expires. That is true. Um, but we want to be really clear that the free pass, so if you've never purchased a Season 1 Battle Pass and you've just been unlocking the free tracks, that will not persist. Um, and this may be a surprise to some folks. Um, so we wanted to be upfront and make sure that we were clear about that. So starting next week with the launch of Lone Wolves, uh, if you own the premium pass, it will persist. You can still switch back and forth exactly like you just saw in that segment with Jerry and Unishek. 
but the free pass will not persist um, unless you at some point decide you'd like to go back and purchase it, mm -hmm. at which point, boom, it's back, and it would also still carry your progress forward. So that is a, a bit of a, a, just a nuance you want to be very upfront and clear about. Um, so just wanted to make that correction. Yeah. Um, and then, John, I think uh, you got two more quick addendums you'd like to add on to that segment, right? You got yeah. here uh, real quick in front of us in the, in the build right now? Yeah, we are doing this very much live. Uh, we we saw people in chat talking about George uh, and his armor kit. Uh, and some of you might enjoy seeing this. That's a very nice shoulder piece uh, in great, great detail in Season 2. Uh, so I wanted to make sure we at least got to show that. So and uh, the shoulder so gate, the shoulder gate yeah. is no more. Yeah, we, this one kind of trended on the Halo subreddit pretty frequently anytime it got posted. So I'm happy we could kind of show that off. Uh, and also the Cyber Showdown, uh, both the visor and Mohawk should be nice and leveled. We we brought out the protractors and they're, made sure they're nice and even. They're nice know? and centered now. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then uh, on the other Xbox we've got here or PC, we have uh, some other things. You'll see seasons, or when season two rolls around, we'll have a rank reset for ranked, and there will be new ranked rewards, ranked emblems that you can get that are kind of focused on that rank that you obtain, and it's going to have like a lone wolf's twist to it, right? So you see a bronze one with the wolf inside of it. And we also have some uh, some classic emblems making a return, like this one. I, I know a lot of fans from back in Halo 2 love the uh, is it card suits, yeah. Uh, we've got the the clubs, diamonds, and even a Florida lease you can see on the right there. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, that now that officially wraps up the customization segment, if yes. you will. Yes. Yes. Now we want to switch gears. We got one more thing we want to talk about briefly uh, before we turn y'all loose today, and that is our big HCS Kansas City major coming up in just a couple days. Uh, let's get ourselves in the spirit and let's roll our quick HCS teaser trailer. Josh, take it away. Over kill there for Plasma, going to work, gets that. the kill tack as Drift well. Picks up two, two wonderful shots. He oh makes it a third. Finish off the kill on to Royal Two, such an important double, make it a triple. Yeah, I think the seven's the best player in the game right now. Yeah. Crispy oh, yeah. connecting. Oh, oh my, God. my goodness, loses. Big double kill from Ombor. Can he get the triple? Oh. He does. Triple oh. kill from Ombor. Kansas City on the horizon. John, you're flying out tomorrow, right? No, yep, I'm not, I'm not yep. too far behind you. We're looking forward to another action-packed, uh, what should be a really exciting weekend of, of Halo Esports. Yeah, uh, we've got some of the best teams in the world flying out. Actually, the best teams in the world, right? If they qualified in their regions, they got a paid trip out here uh, to Kansas City to play in the U.S. A lot of them are playing right now at a boot camp. Uh, at the Kansas City Royal Stadium, right? I think it's Kauffman Stadium. It's pretty freaking cool to watch them play. They're all set up in the in the like Diamond Club and then being broadcast on the Jumbotron. And it might even be live on Twitch right now. Yeah, if we had known, maybe we would have... Uh, <laughs> I would have flown out early. <laughs> ...rescheduled this stream a little differently. Um, you know, one of the big things, of course, if you're not going to... If you are going to Kansas City, we certainly look forward to meeting you and hope you'll stop by and, and, and chat with us. But if you're not, uh, not to worry... A lot of different ways you can tune in. There'll be Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta Street. Whoa, can we put that back up, Josh? That was a little fast. I'm a little slow. <laughs> um, a lot of different opportunities, though. There'll be four streams going uh, to catch all the action. Here we go. I um, want to give a general shout-out. Make sure if you're on Twitter, you want to follow at HCS for real-time updates. All yes. the latest and greatest coming out of the event. Um, but right here, you'll see a rundown of, of, of the four primary uh, official streams you'll be able to tune into. And of course, uh, watching those streams not only delivers great Halo competitive action, but Twitch drops. So we've got a number of these up for grabs this weekend. First one here, this will be a special commemorative... Um, how, what are we calling this, John? This is, looks like you watch a grassroots streamer yeah. during their Make-A-Wish donation drive, and you will earn this special UI backdrop, the HGS trophy. Yep. Uh, do you, I don't happen to know offhand when the donation drive streams are happening. Yeah, so they're happening on site at Kansas City. We're going to have Just our all grassroots, throughout the day. Yep, okay, cool. grassroots streamers. You can find them on their respective channels. Uh, they will be streaming, driving money for charity. And if you tune in, you can get this awesome backdrop. 
I want to just go to shout out here too. If you go to aka.ms slash infinite dash live, you'll get more information about these drops. Also notes down there at the bottom, you would like, if you haven't done this already, you need to go to Halo Waypoint, you need to go to Twitch, you need to basically connect your two accounts together and make sure you get credit for those Twitch drops. Mm -hmm. um, and you can read more about that at aka.ms slash drops help. Mm -hmm. So that's our first Twitch drop. We got more to come. Let's see. Up next, we got vehicle coatings and a really cool, I don't know, I would pronounce that wrong, but a bumper attachment, it looks like, uh, <laughs> for uh, for the Warthog there, right? Yep, you, so you can equip some like custom geo to, to your vehicle there. And the Midnight Gold is one of my favorite vehicle coatings, right? And you get it for all three. It's, so it's awesome. As the slide says here, just watch the official broadcast for up to three hours and you'll be able to earn these drops. Uh, but wait, there's more. Next up, we have... Yeah, so what do we call these banners? Yes. Yeah, so this will be on the backdrop, kind of behind your nameplate yep. uh, when you're loading into a match. And these are for our partnered co-streamers. So we've got a few different, like I'd say larger influencer type people when they're streaming, co-streaming the event, watching it on their own personal streams. Uh, you can earn this on their channel as well. And I think we have one more Twitch drop. This one will be exclusive only for the grand finals, which of course will be sometime Sunday afternoon. Watch that for one hour, and you will s net this cool, clean sweep uh, weapon charm. Yeah, the ex old extermination medal. Uh, one of my favorites. And yes, grand finals, only on the Halo stream, though. So make sure you're tuning in for an hour during grand finals on twitch.tv slash Halo. Uh, but again, I encourage everyone to uh, drop a follow to the at HCS account on Twitter. There'll mm -hmm. be real-time updates. Of course, at Halo is also a good place to follow. Um, we'll have Andy there from our team. We'll be there making sure that we're, we're keeping the information flowing and uh, doing our best to bring the event to you uh, for those who can't be there in person. So big shout out to our friends on the HCS team, all the teams, all the orgs and competitors. Looking forward to a great weekend. Wishing everyone yeah. the best of luck. Yeah, we've got like five teams that can all compete for first place right now. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm go, excited. Do you want to put you on the spot and make you do a prediction or, or no? Uh... I don't know if I could do a good prediction, but I kind of want to root for Kansas City because they're putting on that awesome boot camp. They're in their hometown, Kansas City Pioneers. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to good it. Good call. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to make a prediction because I'll, <laughs> I'll just wait and see. Uh, hey, we're all winners. We'll see some top world-class Halo. We're all going to be winners in that regard. Yep. Um, John, before we log off here today, uh, a couple of the things I thought we would just quickly touch on for folks who maybe haven't heard. Mm -hmm. Lots going on clearly with, with Halo Infinite, with Season 2 imminent, but... In case you missed it, MCC actually has just got a pretty significant update, including the long-awaited release of updates to Firefight that now bring the Flood into the fray. Yeah, so you can play this with friends. Uh, I ended up jumping in the, the week it launched, and it is terrifying, but it is fun. And <laughs> but it's terrifying. Dude. You can head to HaloWaypoint.com and learn more about the recent MCC update. I think we also had a patch this morning as well for MCC. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, want to give a big shout out to all the folks on the MCC team still working hard, still bringing content updates and features to the title. So yeah. um, big thanks to them for that. I do want to give one shout out for the custom game browser, which yeah. now includes all the games uh, that are in MCC. So you don't, ha we used to just be a couple games. Now you have all of them. Uh, that you can just jump in and play tons of fun customs with anyone in the Halo community. And that's been a labor of love. I know, I think we announced that like 15 years ago, it feels like, but um, huge shout out to the team and also obviously to the insiders and to the community. None of that would have been possible without your sort of consistent help with flighting and feedback and just sort of continually pushing the team to to evolve and improve the game. So mm -hmm. big win there. Um, something else I want to give a quick shout out to, uh, just recently, we had the launch of the Halo Encyclopedia. Uh, John, I'll do a quick impromptu unboxing. Let me know what it looks like. Yeah, uh, here, I'm going to unbox it. it live on the air. <laughs> and boom, there you go. The Halo Encyclopedia. This thing is... It's big. It's a dangerous It's a dangerous book. It's um, Careful, don't sprain yourself. Um, this is the regular edition. There's also a collector's edition. Um, it's available now on Amazon or your favorite bookstore. So give that a, a, a look. It's got... So much information, incredible art and information for anyone that's a fan of, of the Halo franchise. So a couple pages easy to get lost in there. there. Big shout out to everybody oh, in the studio go. and the franchise team who helped work to bring this to life. Uh, we mentioned this earlier, John, but I want to give another shout out as well to gear.xbox.com. 
Yeah, of course. We carry it away. Sorry. We've talked. Yeah, you can re- <laughs> you can borrow that. Uh, we talked about the Tenerai collection, which you can find now. Of course, there's also other more evergreen offerings. Uh, I believe as well there will be some HCS merchandise yep. available uh, to coincide with this weekend's event. Yep. Some um, new HCS merch. Speaking yep. of, I think on site too, an exclusive event T-shirt, I believe, will yep. also be offered. That red one. It's looking good. Uh, of course, we have more than just the games going on, John. Give us a quick update on Halo the series. Oh, TV show. No yeah. No spoilers. Oh, I would love to get into a full detailed conversation. But yeah, uh, we have done five episodes so far. Episode six comes out tonight at midnight. I will be there watching it, waiting. Uh, toss it up on the projector. I'm excited for it. We had lots of good action in, season, in episode five. That is all I'll say. Uh, but... Yeah, you can join the conversation on the official Halo Discord server as well. We've got a whole section set up there. We also have like a watch party channel where you can watch right as it drops at midnight. Uh, I'm just looking forward to more. Yeah, and also, uh, in case you missed it, big shout out. Alex on the community team every Monday serves up a recap blog where he sort of dissects and breaks down the prior episodes. So uh, a great place to go as well for fans of the series. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, John, we're getting near the end. I wanted to give one last uh, shout out. Let's just talk about, uh, we mentioned this at the outset, season th- two is going to launch on May 3rd. Yes. Uh, we do have a graphic um, just to give you a better sense. We are going to launch this at 11 a.m. Pacific, our time. That's generally currently our normal rollover for the week. Mm-hmm. Um We'll get this out on social here in a bit, but this will just give you a sense of where that means where you live. So we're doing a simultaneous launch. Um, one important note, we got we got the word out yesterday in case you missed it. We are going to have an hour of planned downtime, mm-hmm. um, essentially from 10 a.m. Pacific until the season goes live on 11. Uh, online services will be disabled. So things like matchmaking, uh, I yeah. think. Pretty uh, much anything. Pretty online. much anything. Yeah. yeah. Anything that requires a services connection will not be functional during that hour. Yeah. You should be able to play campaign, though. So no worries. No worries there. Yeah, yeah my, my main note was just for folks that are going after this week's ultimate reward in the game, which includes mm-hmm. a really cool mm-hmm. uh, visor, don't cut it too close because we are going to turn the lights off uh, just a little bit uh, on Tuesday there in preparation for, for the new season launch. Mm-hmm. Um, and, geez, I think that's pretty much everything, John. Pretty yeah. dense information filled show Uh, i want to give another big thanks to joseph and jerry for stopping by and helping us uh reveal and talk about some new information um another plug please go to halowaypoint.com we talked about outcomes blogs today definitely worth the read be sure to check out joseph's monthly update as well um and i think that's all i got yeah we'll have a blog on launch day with tons of new info tons of the info kind of summarizing what's in season two as well so if you want to either jump in or read that blog yeah yeah Anyways, I think that's it. We'll let you go. We, we've, we've had your time for a while. Really appreciate everybody from tuning in. And again, really appreciate everyone's continued support, your passion. We get it. We're all excited. We're all passionate about Halo. Together, we're going to keep doing great things, and we are going to get there. So thanks a lot. We cannot wait to join you online on May 3rd as we kick off Lone Wolves. We'll see you then. Room for another wolf.